Hello everybody, my name is Star Wars Boy, how are you? And welcome back to the channel for a brand new Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. Last week we did our class guide on the officer, so it's time to finish this series off with the marksman, the specialist. Also, only a small percentage of viewers are actually subscribed, so please subscribe. It's completely free and it helps out the channel. Anyways, let's get started. Now, the Specialist is a master of range, being able to pick off enemies from afar and the only class in the game to have a sniper rifle as their primary weapon. Just like the Assault and Officer, the Specialist has 150 health but actually only used to have 100. Their base weapon is honestly pretty terrible, dealing 45 damage to the body with a DPS of 135. This is a sniper so it has no damage drop off which puts its range at infinite. This weapon overheats after 10 shots. Honestly, it's a miracle that co-op exists because I had to get kills with this thing against actual players, which trust me is very, very challenging. Now, moving on to the unlockable weapons, and being completely honest, the Specialist definitely has some of the worst guns in the game. The first weapon is the IQA-11, which is a slight upgrade from the default weapon and can be unlocked after 50 Specialist kills, dealing 67 damage and a rate of fire of 130 rounds per minute. Now, the attachments I'd recommend for this weapon are the Bolt Speed and Improved Cooling Attachments. The Bolt Speed mod enables bolts to be fired at greater speeds while maintaining weapon stability, and improved cooling just speaks for itself. Honestly, I don't see why you should use this weapon, honestly, like the background footage doesn't even show this weapon, which shows how bad it is. The next weapon is the A280 CFE, which can be unlocked after 200 specialist kills. It deals 33 to 25 damage with a rate of fire of 320 rounds per minute. The range comes in at 20 to 40 meters with an overheat of 15 shots. The mods I would recommend for this weapon are Dual Zoom and Burst Mode. Dual Zoom kind of speaks for itself, and Burst Mode enables a 3 round burst per trigger pull, making this weapon pretty deadly. The next weapon is the NT-242, which is by far the best gun for the Specialist and one of the best guns in the game. It can be unlocked after getting 400 Specialist kills, which is a bit of a grind. It deals 106 damage to the body and one hits all classes to the head. This weapon has no drop-off damage and overheats after only 3 shots. The two mods that make this weapon even better are the Improved Cooling and Disruptor Shot attachments. Improved Cooling allows the blaster to be fired for much longer, and the Disruptor Shot adds explosive damage, with extra damage to vehicles and turrets. With this attachment, you can aim at their feet and you will still deal a ton of damage from that splash damage. Plus, it makes taking out ATSTs very, very easy. The final weapon is the Cycler Rifle, which can be unlocked after 50 specialist kills in co-op. It deals 75 damage with a rate of fire of 180 rounds per minute. It has infinite range and an overheat after 3 shots. The two attachments I'd recommend for this weapon are the Reduced Recoil and Improved Cooling Attachments. Both are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into too much detail to into them. This weapon is by far the worst weapon in the game and it cannot even be compared to the 2015 version, which actually did go through shields. Now, just like every character in the game, the Specialist has three abilities which can either be upgraded or replaced. Their L1 ability is a Shock Grenade which deals 30 damage on explosion with a gradual shock dealing 10 damage per hit. The cards available for this ability are the Improved Shock Grenade, the Repulsor Cannon which is a trash version of the CA-87 from 2015, and the Stinger Pistol which can be a massive pain to deal with. Their R1 ability are the Thermal Binoculars which reveal and mark enemies. The cards available for this ability are the Improved Binoculars, the Trip Mine, and the Personal Shield. Their final middle ability is Infiltration which scrambles enemy radars, reveals enemies, and swaps your sniper for the EE4 from 2015. The cards available for this ability are the Kill Streak Infiltration that replenishes time per kill, the Hardened Infiltration which grants you damage reduction during the ability, and the Scrambled Infiltration which reveals enemies to your teammates. Now moving on to loadouts and I have three loadouts for you guys that serve their purpose really well. The first is the Battle Point Loadout. This is a loadout that should get you a bunch of battle points a lot faster than your teammates, giving you an early chance to play the hero. 
The first card and the most important card to this setup is the Bounty Hunter Star card. With this card, you gain points at an increased rate from 5% to 20% with a maxed out star card. I feel like I don't have to get into too much detail because the description of the card says it all. The second card is the Improved Thermal Binoculars which increase the duration the enemies are spotted from 9 seconds to 12 seconds with a maxed out star card. Every time you reveal enemies, you gain a bunch of points, not to mention that you will know where the enemies are, making it easier to get kills. The final card is the Improved Shock Grenade which has a longer duration and radius, being active for 4 seconds to 6 seconds with a maxed out star card. Throw this grenade into a packed area and you'll rack in a ton of points, not to mention all the shocked enemies will be weakened and easy to kill. The next loadout is the combat loadout which is designed for basically any trooper mode without an objective like supremacy and blast. The first card is the marksman card which resets your ability heat when you get a headshot kill from 20% to 40% with a maxed out star card. Honestly this card is really helpful as getting headshots will be even more rewarding. The next card is the stealth card which removes you from the minimap when you fire your weapon. It lets you deal increased melee damage from 67 damage to 120 damage with a maxed out star card. Both these perks are really good, the enemy won't know where you are and if they do you can throw 2 punches in and take them out with that insane melee damage. The final card is the personal shield which creates a bubble and surrounds you and blocks damage from all directions. The bubble health goes from 160 HP to 240 HP with a maxed out star card. If you're ever low on health, simply pop this shield and run behind cover. You won't be able to fire your weapon while the shield bubble is activated, so be sure to make use of that increased melee damage if you have to. Now the final loadout we have is the objective loadout which should help with the objective while the match's fate is undecided. The first card is the scrambled infiltration which reveals enemies to your allies as well as the scrambled in enemy radars. The range of this ability goes from 10 meters to 14 meters with a maxed out star card. This card is going to help your team out a lot especially if the post is contested and you can't find where the enemies are hiding or where they're coming from. The next card is the survivalist card which lets your health regenerate sooner from 20% to 40% with a maxed out star card. This card pretty much speaks for itself. Your health will come back faster which means you will stay alive longer on that objective. The final card is the trip mine which detonates when an enemy crosses it. Its cooldown goes from 30 seconds to 16 seconds with a maxed out star card. Simply place this trip wire in a door or hallway and the enemies will have no way to get through it. This is really helpful at stopping enemies from going to the objective or just keeping them in a restricted area. So that is going to be it for this class guide guys, we have finally done all 4 of them, from the assault to the specialist. My personal loadout for the specialist is the NT242 with the personal shield, marksman and stealth cards. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys next time, bye, and may the force be with you, always.